Hello, welcome to 7 Minutes of Science, your weekly high-speed breakdown of all the biggest news in the world of science this week, as according to me, Eddie Edwards, here from Mission Acceptable. Uh, big week with news from not one, not two, but three major space agencies and their, on their various missions. What well, are some interesting news about dark matter, um, and a follow-up on a story we did last week about a racist selling his Nobel Prize. Um, so, without any further ado, let's give me seven minutes on the clock, and in three, two, one, let's go. Right, Monday saw the uh, crowdfunded Moon Mission Lunar Mission 1 announce its long-term scientific goals, which are to um, send a probe to the Moon's South Pole, study the geology of the area and see if it would at any point in the future be suitable for found, uh, a, a lunar base, and to also see by drilling up to a depth of about 100 metres um, whether or not the dark side of the moon would be a decent place to have observatories attached to. Um, these are basically the exact same goals, uh, goals that the um, recently scrapped ESA lunar mission had. Um, so somebody's just basically taken that on board and they're going with this. This is a crowdfunding thing. You can go on Kickstarter, you can put money into this. And once again, I'm left angry by this because it's something that we as a species want. It's good for us. It's going to help us in the future. And as such, of course, we will have to go to our own pockets. Whereas government spying and pointless wars, those, those, those get funded from the taxpayers. The stuff we don't want that they take for the tax money. Okay. But I'm going to stop running. Screw it. Look, this is the quickest and easiest way of getting to the moon. So let's go. Let's put our backing behind it and let's make something impressive happen. Okay. Tuesday. The Waters of Mars, not just the name of a very good David Tennant episode of Doctor Who, but the, uh, something we're actually studying. Um, basically, um, you're probably aware that Mars has had water on it at some point. We know this. There's geological scouring on the planet's surface that indicates large amounts of water moved over uh, over very quick periods and scoured it, maybe similar to the Badlands in, uh, in America. Um, what we didn't know for certain before was whether we ever had standing water for long periods of time. Well, it turns out that the site that the Mars Curiosity rover um, is uh, surveying does actually have a mountain in the middle of a canyon. How did that form? Well, there's a, a depression of some sort that fills with water and then sediment gets deposited and builds the hill in the middle. For that to happen, there must have been standing water in that pool for millions and millions of years. And for that to happen, there must be large bodies of standing water on the surface of Mars for periods of billions of years. So basically, we've confirmed that Mars probably had oceans, lakes and seas, um, which is very cool, very interesting. Could we maybe terraform it and get it back? That's the kind of interesting question I want asked. But, uh, yeah, um, this is going to be more information we're going to see coming out because over the next 16 years, we're going to work towards getting a man onto Mars. And we're going to see a lot more information and find out a lot of interesting stuff. Okay. Also, that's enough time for life to evolve. So, interesting. Wednesday, and I hope you appreciate the gag with the story titles there. I thought it was very clever. Um, Earth's water did not come from comments or comets, or at least the water on Earth and the water on Comet 67P are not a match. Uh, regular viewers, hello to the dozen or so of you who actually exist, um, will remember that I spoke about how the water in the solar system comes in two isotopes at the while ago. We'll have a link to that story up there. Um, and um, you can take that water from places in the solar system, check the ratios of the two different isotopes, see where it originally came from. They have run this on um, samples of water vapour gathered from the atmosphere of uh, the Comet 67P, and it turns out it doesn't match up with Earth's. Um, they couldn't drill, um, they had some problems with that, but this was gathered from the atmosphere of the Comet coming out of one of the many vents. Basically, the upshot of this is that either water didn't come to Earth from comets, came from asteroids instead, or alternatively, Comet 67P is an unusual comet, something we won't know until we can repeat these kind of scans and studies on sec um, other comet comets, other targets, and so I hope the ESA is uh, definitely going to be working on. Okay, first, their team of engineers out of South Korea have uh, built one of the world's most sensitive vibration uh, sensors by copying spiders. No! No! Bad scientist! Starts with a vibration sensor, and before you know it, we have man spiders. I don't like man spiders. I don't need no man spiders all up in my business. What are you doing, science? Um, in all seriousness, not that man spiders aren't serious. Um, what they did is they took a strip of platinum, put a bunch of parallel cracks in it, uh, run an uh, electrical uh, force through it, and of course when the cracks come together from pressure and PP and bit bent around, that obviously changes the resistance of the uh, of the platinum overall, so the amount of electricity going through, so it creates an incredibly sensitive motion sensor. So incredibly sensitive that if you put one on my neck, it would be able to tell you what I was saying just from the vibrations of my skin. So it's something we're going to be seeing in like the next Mission Impossible movie. And I beat Tom Cruise to it, Yeah, freaky Scientologist nut job. Okay. On to Friday, uh, scientists have discovered radiation given off by the decay of the sterile neutrino. Or, to put it another way, the first physical evidence that dark matter definitely exists. Now, we know that dark matter definitely exists because we can see its gravitational effects on other things in our own universe. However, we've never been able to actually see dark matter before. 
This, what has been picked up, um, is a radiation signature from the Pegasi, Pegasus Galaxy Cluster, home of the Wraith, if you've ever watched Stargate Atlantis. Um, our sister galaxy, Andromeda, and from our own Milky Way, this signature doesn't match up with the decay rates of any known particles. It's, um, it's a tiny spike of around 700 photons um, found in X-ray data. Um, it's been interpreted as evidence for a tiny particle, about one one hundredth the size of an electron, and it's awesome. Um, and this is awesome as it would provide a way of designing telescopes specifically designed to track down um, dark matter. So this is very interesting. Uh, it could lead to a whole new field. Okay, and finally, Physics World released its list of the top ten breakthroughs of the year. So let's run through them. Can I get the top of the pops two music, or if not that, just an instrumental version of Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin? Thank you. Um, 10. Creation of the world's first acoustic tractor beam. 9. Quantum data compression. Let's not go into that, we are on the clock. Um, 8. The creation of supernova explosions in a lab. 7. Storing data in magnetic holograms. 6. Improvement of optical fibres for image transmission. 5. Isolation of the magnetic interactions between electrons. 4. Fuel gain from nuclear fusion. 3. Detection of neutrinos from the sun's main nuclear reaction. 2. Using radiation from Quasar to detect filament of the cosmic web, which sounds mental. And in at number 1, it is the ESA's Rosetta mission landing down on a comet for the first time in human history, getting us some of the most interesting scientific data we've seen this year. Give it up for the ESA! Woo! Rosetta! Uh, good list, isn't it? Be fair, I've added in the numbers, I just took them in the order. They actually don't have, they choose 10, they say one is best and the others are all cool. Okay? Um, and finally, finally, James Watson has his Nobel Prize back. Um, the bloke who fought out three million for uh, Watson's Nobel, Alishar Uzumov, a Russian oligarch, uh, said he felt it was unacceptable that James Watson was forced to sell uh, uh, the prize. Uh, James Watson, by the way, isn't poor. He's had a string of very successful and high-paying jobs all the way up until 2007 when he went full racist. He's not in any financial trouble. He wasn't forced to sell this. He was selling this basically to protest the way he felt he'd been treated by the scientific community. Um... Yeah, so he's got three million now and still has his Nobel Prize, despite the fact that this man is too stupid to realise, even if you are racist, don't confirm it in an interview. Oh, God. Um, since I started the show, I genuinely... This is a Russian oligarch I was about. Since I started the show, I haven't seen a single Russian breakthrough, so screw them. And this guy was then... Um, Uz Alisher Uzumov, so I'm guessing he's invested in a football team. Oh, it's Arsenal. Damn! Yeah. I was hoping it'd be Spurs. Ah, oh, just as an as a as, a, as an Arsenal fan, why did the racist? Why did it have to be the guy who owns big shares in Arsenal who helped out the racist scientists? I don't like. Such is life, eh? Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this week's uh, show. I hope you're still enjoying watching this as much as we're enjoying making it. Um, for once, when I say the following sentence, I'm not lying. I have extra videos to go up this week. Genuinely, I've actually just finished editing them downstairs. Got a new commentary going up soon. Got everyone versus everyone. I'll be polishing off the edit on that tonight as well. So we'll have some new stuff coming up during the week. I am going to be doing some more Let's Plays. I've tried to record the uh, second one to, to the moon twice now. And I just think the best thing I can say is that the computers and all the technology that I have hate me. Because that's not been happening. Um... Uh, aside from that, we do have some more bits and pieces, and um, next week's uh, Seven Minutes of Science will be the last one of the year. What we're going to be doing instead is my seven heroes of science um, for Christmas Day. I'm going to run you through the top seven scientists I think have made the biggest difference over the last year. Uh, we're going to run through uh, who they are. Next week, have a standard Seven Minutes of Science, but that one should be up. Maybe not on the Saturday or the Sunday. I might actually try and get it up for um, Christmas Day itself. Um, Although if I do that, I'm probably going to end up recording it Christmas morning. And now that I've said that, you all out there probably realise how sad my Christmas is. But anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this video, like the video. If you think someone you know might like the video, share the video. And if you want to see more of what we're doing here, please hit that subscribe button. The, the YouTube one, not the, not the Facebook one. Hit the YouTube subscribe button. We really appreciate it. It'd be cool of you. Uh, until next time, good luck in your endeavours. If your endeavours be good. And goodbye. <laughs>